Hey, so today I'm going to be talking to you about malware, by, uh, malware images and how I came across this really cool way to detect malware and viruses using machine learning. If you want a full comparison of the different convolutional uh, CNN networks they used to compare uh, to you know be able to detect malware, I'll link an article in the description below which goes over the different uh, networks and their relative performances and what the advantages and disadvantages of each of those networks are. But in this video, I'll just give you a rough idea of what exactly they did. And uh, just because it's a very cool idea and it really shows you how creative you can get you know, with machine learning and AI. And uh, it's all about being creative with your problem solving. So what they did is essentially mentioned in this step out here so imagine we have a piece of code you know this is basically your malware binary so this will come in uh, the, so malware will have a dot exe for example exe it might have the dot data file and it will have a whole bunch of other uh, you know the text which will be the code basically and it will have all these things associated with it so what you can do is without running these codes you can just open up the files and you can convert all of this into binary because remember our computers deal with binary so uh, e without really executing it you can just take the string representation of all of these and you can get a binary number and this is the binary string basically encoding your malware without you remember you still haven't run this malware it's not like you've clicked on it you've just taken the malware opened it up and uh, taken all its contents inside and converted them into binary so now using that binary you can con create 8 bit vectors because remember 8 bits is just 2 to the power of 8 so ba you're just basically converting binary which is 2 to the power of 1 to 2 to the power of 8 so you know you'll take you'll take eight bit eight bits of binary at once, and you will convert those into uh, you know the rep uh, the corresponding value of the vector. And you might be wondering what the hell does this accomplish? You can take this eight bit vector, and we can convert this into a grayscale image. Remember, a grayscale image is basically just a black and white image where everything is has a corresponding grayscale value. Uh, the exact nuances of a grayscale you can Google. It's pretty cool. Uh, they did a lot of mathematical formulations of how exactly you convert a page to picture image into a grayscale. It's not just a simple um, add up the RGB and divide it by three. It's quite com it's you know it's slightly more complicated than that. I think they used a lot of the uh, biology behind our vision and how we perceive different colors. So it's a pretty cool topic. I would suggest checking it out if you're interested. But basically, they convert this into a sorry. So this is gray scale which is what this looks like and now that we have a grayscale image that's encoded our um, malware what what can we do next here's the here's one thing we can do why don't we just run a image detection algorithm we already have shown various like you know uh, image classifications kind of been beaten to death at this point it's a it's one of those fields that Google, Facebook, they all put so much money into and it's not a fail, it's a money they'll keep putting more and more money into, so it's a lot, it's a very, you know, active field in research and uh, to a certain extent even my defect detection work is basically image detection of one sort. So all you have to do is get a good binary classifier that can take an, a grayscale 8 bit image and either say malware or not malware. And you, or you might want a more complex classifier, which will basically classify it into different kinds of malware. You know, uh, it can have various steps. And all, so um, using this now, you might be thinking, why? Why do we need to go through this process? Uh, why? Why are we basically? Why don't we just use? Uh, you know, why don't we use the code directly to classify it as a malware or not? So that's a good question. An interest like remember uh, when you're using the code directly, you're actually getting into NLP. You have to, you have to, you're getting into encoded strings. So like you know, strings might not necessarily be in English text. If you've ever tried to open up files uh, of like you know weird extensions, they have all kinds of nonsensical code and Unicode, etc. So NLP is just much harder to work with. 
and again as I stated image classification is something that's been beaten to that it's something where you know you can close your eyes pick like five very good uh, network architectures that will give you 99% plus accuracy results and you can easily go with them so uh, you know in computer science and math you're always you know often when you're trying to solve one problem you try to break it down into other problems that you can solve so what they did was they just took this whole um, malware detection problem and they noticed that there was a way to convert mal malwares into images and images themselves are a problem that can be solved pretty easily like image classification is a problem that can be solved pretty easily or it, if not easily at least can be solved uh, you know using uh, the right methods and there are lots of research on it so they just uh, so you can do this so again you're leveraging existing research you know you're able to you and you're able to have very good results and another advantage of this that you might not notice immediately is like uh, you people like you and me we don't look at these grayscale malware images you know all day but a hi-fi researcher who only does malware detection can actually look at these images and you know they might be able to pick up certain patterns that a normal person like you or I cannot pick up so it helps them also understand uh, the uh, you know the authors of this paper mentioned that it might be in the future as we uh, generate more uh, malware images and more people use this kind of a methodology they will be able uh, researchers uh, will be able to derive insights into the nature of the malware based off the images and always uh, obviously as mentioned uh, we already will have exist pre existing images that can work well and using images we can do all kinds of patterns so if imagine there's a new kind of virus that you know a traditional methods cannot detect but uh, you know l once it's converted into an image it might start it, we might be able to see similarities with other kinds of viruses you know like uh, that's what art instructors do for example they're always looking for oh this new artist you can see inspirations of his work from an old artist etc so similarly you might have people specifically trained to look at these kinds of images and be like oh this kind of a virus we see very you know that uh, like for example this section of the virus is very similar to you know another classical virus or something and with that you'll be able to bring in human detection because remember humans are visual creatures so we work much better with images than with text uh, that's about it for this video you know wanted to keep it relatively short to give you an understanding of this idea if you do like this video be sure to uh, drop a like on this uh, because it really helps my channel you know drop that like for the youtube algorithm let the algorithm gods know that i am worthy of promotion uh, as always, if you like this kind of content and you're not subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're more notified of more videos. I talk about machine learning, research, uh, AI, uh, different applications, etc. all the time. And recently I actually found out that one of my videos is so well regarded that it's the first video that uh, YouTube, uh, that Google will actually suggest to somebody if you search for the topic. And, uh, the topic's uh, called permutation-based feature importance, you know, that video of mine is doing pretty well. Others other videos have been getting quite a quite good reception also so be sure to subscribe and check out my other content if you know you're into machine learning ai research or would just like to keep up with this field but don't really have the technical know-how to dive deep into topics yourself also on a similar way uh, you be sure to check out all my social media links down below um, you know my instagram linkedin uh, twitter all of these are uh, ways where I communicate with uh, people, where I get uh, different subject ideas, where I, you know, sometimes schedule calls to help people understand things, where I can, uh, you know, have more interaction with you guys. So be uh, be sure to connect with me in different areas. Uh, check out the link in the description below, uh, which will actually break down the different, you know, different uh, uh, convolutional neural network structures that they did use to figure this out. Uh, that's about it from me. Thanks for watching and have a good one.